Hi, I'm Ian Brown, Managing Director of Excel Point, and you're listening to On Point. For those of you who haven't heard of Excel Point, we're a global leader in the development of innovative no code software technology. We help businesses all around the world to update their business processes, overcome business challenges, automate workflows, and streamline processes to deliver increased e efficiency and productivity. We do this by implementing innovative, automated and highly flexible adaptable no-code software that is typically 10 times faster than bespoke software, whilst retaining the flexibility and ability to change and adapt quickly as the company grows and evolves. Today I'm joined by Agility System Business Port Limited Managing Director Peter Shields. Peter was an early pioneer of process management and compliance software when he founded the business in 1996. He continues to be a firm believer in process-based approach that increases operational performance to reduce costs while having a greater uh, visibility of all compliance obligations. With the growing list of complex compliance obligations there are, such as data protection, GDPR, um, the Agility System software provides a centralised source of the truth to guide the workforce on delivering safe, efficient and compliant processes. The system's document management capabilities control all content, draft to archive and has military strength functionality by storing officially sensitive content. The new Agility workflow component complements the visual swim lane process maps with process automation and includes QHSE mobile friendly modules. With offices in Aberdeen and Manchester, Business Port provide proven software and expertise and experienced support personnel to an impressive client list, including Babcock M&T, Royal Naval Sites, Total Oil, Baker Hughes, Acom, Amentum, Interserve, Centrica, Energy, Siemens, and many mid-sized innovative companies. Peter, thanks for joining us here today. Pleasure, thank you for inviting me. That introduction makes it sound like you've been around the process industry since Adam was a lad and I notice it says that you were a pioneer of process driven and especially swim lane um, visualizations of business processes. Tell yeah. me about the early days. Well I, I was a, a quality engineer. Um, I started way back in 78. Um, I was just out of school right enough. I was going to say, for most of our audience, <laughs> they'll think, 78. Exactly. People are still alive from I know, that period. Exactly. When the televisions had just been in colour then. But uh, in those days, quality management was relatively new. Um, but it was very much document orientated. So all processes were really in procedural format. Lots of text. So of course, with the the early document management systems that were beginning to be you know developed in those days, um, that was automatic that people would just sort of basically store all these documents in the one repository. Of course, it's over the years as the quality function started to uh, to grow, um, health and safety, particularly particularly in the oil and gas market um, after Piper Alpha. Um, there was basically a, 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 you know, there was a huge amount of documentation produced, uh, procedures, policies, guidelines, and by the by the year of say ninety three, I thought this is really very difficult. Not just for the quality managers and the QHSC, it's um, health and safety, um, environmental were then coming on board. So the compliance. Uh, environment had really expanded and just to use a document management system text documents it was just too difficult and the workforce really didn't like using such a tool so yeah. I, I came up with an idea of of basically mapping out the processes first the core processes and then the supporting processes and doing that with the workforce so that we could have a I, you know, an accurate representation of what the activity actually involved. Yep. Having seen your tool, I know that the mapping out of those processes that you described is very visual. Yeah. So it's meant to be very easy to understand, very easy to navigate, 
um, you know, anybody doing their day job doesn't have to be an expert on corporate policies and procedures. They can click a few buttons and get to where they need to be. Absolutely. And I take it that simplification is right at the core of what you do. That's right. I, I th you know, the idea of experts writing the process was really, it, it wasn't to be um, adopted by us. What we wanted to do was to get people around the table and not necessarily the managers. We wanted different users. We wanted mature users. We wanted younger users. We wanted different disciplines. So a, a typical session could be maybe half a dozen different disciplines around the table and we would basically walk through the sequence of events. What that did allow was for people to actually start improving the process. In fact, in some cases, people were not aware of what happened further on in the process or where it kicked off. And it was a bit like these walls here. What we did was basically reduce the walls, try to get an, an even kind of playing field, shall we say, and the transformation from text document to even just a basic swim lane was absolutely enormous. It was a really big jump. And of course, now um, we can obviously then take that into an, another area of process automation. And it's the, it's the from a change point of view, we felt that we got people on board. We got great ideas. We certainly simplified it. But what we could also do was we could identify compliance, which really was a big bogeyman. The normal worker is not aware often of compliance and the importance of it. So what we did, we drove each element of compliance into the process. And then we realised, hang on a sec, why don't we put risk in here as well? So now we've got this kind of fairly you know, it's a, an, agno an agnostic kind of framework that allows any discipline in any company to understand what they do, what the rules of the game are within that particular process and what the dangers are. Yep. And as we say, it, we really make sure that people get home for the dinner at night time. It's all about, you know, process and health and safety and, and, and safety as well. It's, a, it's an, a combination, I think. Yeah. And that introduction touched on governance, um, regulation, GDPR, for example. Yeah. Um, the way certainly large corporates are, but it applies to all sizes of business, the governance requirements, the regulatory requirements mm -hmm. to um, cover compliance with legislation, compliance with environmental issues, compliance with um, information governance in, in the context of GDPR, etc. That compliance piece the regulations and the governance of that is just growing all the time. The, the burden of that on a business becomes very significant. And it's okay doing it, but being able to evidence that you're doing it and doing it professionally, yeah. um, digital systems like yours help with. No, I, I, absolutely. I, I, as I said, the, the compliance landscape has just grown enormously. Therefore, we need to to try and simplify the complex, to use that phrase. Um, it's, it's actually surprising that 25 years after we were formed, we can meet a prospective client and the system that they'll be using today was almost identical to the type of systems in 1996. And it's unfortunate that over the years, there hasn't been a lot of investment in the area of business assurance. Of course, as compliance and its requirements have increased, then the boards and senior management are having to pay attention to it. And there's a real closeness now between the way in which companies like us and yourselves look at how the workforce can comply in the simplest possible way. Because we're not going to change the rules. The rules are there. It's the mechanism to try and get people to adopt them quickly and to move on. And as you say, we need to record it. We need to record it safely, securely, potentially for the next 20 years. And as we're now moving towards, obviously, climate change and the sustainability aspects, that's another whole range of aspects that companies are going to have to pay attention to 
at the same time, they're going to have to look at all their ISA standards, their industry standards, and all the general governance that they need. So, in actual fact, compliance is definitely not going away. And we, re you know, I feel that the the standard company, the even you, you know the the SMEs now need support in being able to tick all the particular boxes and be profitable and be safe and deliver what they need to do to their clients. So uh, I, I think that the solutions that, that companies like that we have are, are absolutely necessary. And I know that sounds Crucial. like, like that, yeah. I'm, Crucial. Because it's nigh on impossible for one person or a small department to be able to understand the, the controls that externally people are looking at. And of course, there's the, the, the new ESG requirement coming in from the financial companies. Now, not a lot of people might be aware of it, but um, companies who are looking to borrow money, to expand, to open factories elsewhere, etc. There is a, 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 it's almost, a, and it's not regulated as such at the moment, but ESG stands for Environment, Social and, and Governance. So companies that do want to borrow money to expand for company growth, they're having to address far more than the current compliance climate. Yep. So starting to touch on, we've we've listed off lots of different things there, but also starting to touch on social remit. Absolutely. Imp impact on the social fabric yep. of of the either the local area or us as a country as well. Yeah. I know um, historically you operate at quite a high level in a business in terms of docu documenting, authoring, version controlling, um, approving, etc. Yeah. business processes in the context of a business management system that's easy to navigate. Okay. So for large corporates, that small cog, big wheel, being able to make sense of it all. Yeah. But we met, what, six, seven years ago, I can remember it well, met in Aberdeen, it was the summertime. Um, yeah, it was the summertime, it was raining. That's and um, yes. from that point, I'll say we, have been building systems whereby that upper layer senior managerial strategic um, aspect yeah. now feeds down into the day-to-day -day business transactional processes Absolutely. so that everything that is stated as complying above actually is in instituted in the organization in a way that a, it does comply it's simple and swift to achieve and feeds feeds information backwards and forwards between those two layers yes. so the upper management get good visibility yeah. of what's happening at that lower operational layer Correct. um has that being successful and sort of yeah. laid out the future path for companies to ease some of the problems you've talked about? Absolutely. I, I think the, the labour intensive processes, and that's really where we where we first met, that was the, the whole intention, certainly from our, our viewpoint, that where we have lots of resources producing the same end result, we realised that, that process automation would help. We also realised that um, in the area that, that we can kind of specialise in quality, health, safety and the environment, we could automate the larger processes, so the audit process, non-conformance process, yep. incident management, uh, risk management. So all these kind of processes that not, not only do they inform people of what to do, but as you say, they record the information for posterity. And also there is an interlinking of you know, the non-conformances, the corrective action. So the moving into the process environment, the automated process environment really suited us as a company. And it's the, I, I think the, the marrying up of the foundational piece that we have that provides the organisational structure, it helps drive the policies into the organisation. But as you say, the transactional effect of the processes really give us that kind of top strategy to task so we have an aligned approach all the way through and that's certainly now resonating with a client base that are relatively conservative the blue chip 
such as the, the Babcocks yep. of this world and Total. So they're all now looking to try and improve. And that might well sound as if, my goodness, they're a bit behind the times, but most of the organisations that we work with, you know, they're hugely successful, but they're now beginning to, to feel the pressure of the amount of compliance requirements, plus the drive for performance. And that's what I believe the combination of what we have here between Excel Point and the Agility System Business yeah. Port. Uh, and historically, you've been there's been a key focus on the oil and gas sector, hence your Aberdeen base, yeah. and environmental issues, um, green issues, electrification, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, is putting those organisations under pressure. Yeah. So as those organisations find they have to react and defend themselves, mm -hmm. they have to adapt to new technologies and new okay. ways of delivering things, new market propositions. All of that has to be managed in that strategic um, move forward, yep. done in a way that's delivered cohesively, but transactionally. So uh, you've sort of touched on it, but it was going to be my next question. These are very large organisations, and history shows that large organisations move very slowly. So in terms of adoption of new technologies and new techniques, yeah. are you finding that's a, that's a hard battle to win? You know, you, you're constantly pressing to get through that door and open that door, or it, has it turned more into um, you know, an open arms approach because they see that these things yeah. are needed more now? I, I actually think that we're not quite, as, as they say, opening the kimono fully. I think that we're now at the stage where people, what, clients are beginning to listen to better, more effective, cost-effective ways um, of, of working. I would say that the, the larger companies are certainly now coming to the party, um, but we've also been very successful with some of the, the smaller entrants into the North Sea. Now, these companies have to be nimble, they have to be highly efficient and they're usually dealing with a budget which is something like a thousand times smaller than the, the, the operators, yep. uh, the traditional operators. So they're having to look at reducing costs, pr automating the processes is, is certainly one area, but it has to be combined with a retraining the workforce, get them to understand the changes, the transformation from basically the old ways of doing things. Yep. And so I would say that the, the the new the SMEs, the small to medium sized enterprises, seem to be much more aware of the ability to effectively cut through bureaucracy, cut through sort of waste and inefficiency, levels of duplication that, that are just unbelievable. And and that goes on still in many, many companies. And some some managers that we talk to are actually quite surprised that there is a solution out there. <laughs> it's because, you know that phrase, they only, well, they don't know what they don't know. Absolutely. And, and, and I think that's, the, the gates are beginning to open there. There's less resistance. And, but I would certainly say that the climate change with, and the real drive for sustainability is, is giving industries that final push to be able to say to senior management and the board, you really have to give us a budget to look at this because without a budget, it's it's still just great ideas. Yeah, yeah. Budget is massive. The very first um, podcast we did it was with a guy called Mike Matthews from the manufacturing sector, and he talked about digitalization of processes, so right in our ballpark. And he said one of the big problems is the manufacturing sector don't assign budgets to these things on an annual basis. Yeah. So same mantra, and you're seeing that in you know, your markets, predominantly oil yeah. and gas. Um, we, we do some work in nuclear decommissioning, and in a marketplace that's changing, and I would imagine oil and gas is similar, yeah. there'll be a lot of work around decommissioning, yes. because these are massive assets, yeah. massive impacts, potential for huge envir environmental impacts, and therefore, the management, auditability and so on of all of the information associated with decommissioning must also represent an opportunity for business Paul. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we find that the, um, in fact, 2014, there was an oil crash and we realized as a business that we actually had too much, too many eggs in that basket. 
and oil since, and gas. Oil and gas. Uh, and since then, we have retained all our particular clients. Um, thank you, if any of them listening. Uh, we really do appreciate it. But what we've also done is, is look at um, some of our some of the other areas of the sector, such as defence, manufacturing, um, renewables is is huge. beginning to be huge. There, there is no doubt, and and obviously, just over the last month, we're beginning to realise how desperate we we are as a as a planet, really. So we have to be moving much faster, quicker down the re- renewable route. Um, but we find that. You know, being in one sector gave us a, a good nucleus of experience uh, because oil and gas does involve so so many particular processes, that, you know, from heavy engineering and from procurement, from project management. So I actually been able to to um, work with companies who, who have almost the exact same, only the end product is, is, is different. But there's much more of an awakening now across the board that there has to be better ways of doing things because to, as I mentioned earlier, to have the same tools and techniques as they had 20, 30 years ago, everything has changed now. Yeah, yeah. Interesting you say that. We see quite a lot with our customer base that you'll meet a new prospect and they'll say, so, I don't know, where have you done this before in the leather working industry? And yeah. I'll often sit and think, but this is all about processes, systems, efficiency, um, good user experience, maybe visibility for senior stakeholders. Yeah. Those problems are the same problems. Absolutely. You could replace the industry with almost any industry sector. That's the right. problems are the same. And the beauty about companies like ours, we can bring some best practices and learning experiences from other industry sectors right. to bear in any sector. So there may be a sector, we're talking oil and gas, might be a little bit behind other sectors in terms of change, Mm -hmm. Um, but we can bring that experience to bear because we've been with plenty of other sectors who are ahead of the game and they've learned those lessons and solved some of those problems. Correct. Um, So interesting, we see the same thing. I would say that, you know, sometimes when we um, are first introduced to another um, a company in a sector, uh, let's just take a, a particular sector of manufacturing that, that we haven't really worked with in. Apart from, as I mentioned, the end product, the whole, the whole area is about getting people to do the right thing at the right time and do it efficiently and safely, etc. So there's no difference from the actual concept of what we're trying to do here. And really it's, you know, it's, it's trying to identify where in the past we've had a similar type problem or solution and and it does help because over the years you see companies make the same mistakes year in year out yep. and it's only because they've never really known any better and so i think companies like us are able to actually we're a catalyst for change and by by being a catalyst you're able to show look you know this company did this we we, we found um some wonderful new techniques in a in a biscuit factory of all places and you know, and also there was some lovely light-hearted stories that, that that we could tell. You know, when we go into a company and we talk about processes, quite often the workforce are sort of saying, "Well, what do you mean by processes?" And I had a situation. Um, there's a a very well-known biscuit manufacturer in Glasgow, and uh, as I walked down the production line, I um, I saw a person stacking boxes and they were stacking boxes frantically and I had a hat on and I had a clipboard and a white kind of gown we all had to do this and I'm mapping out the process from um, from the mixing through to the oven and this was walking towards the packaging and as I was walking towards this person I thought hmm they're not going to have a lot of time to tell me what they're doing so I, I, I just happened to say hmm I said, hi there. And the person looked up at me and I said, so do you want to just describe, you know, what you do here? And she said, this lady looked at me. What? And I said, well, do you want to just explain, you know, what the process is? 
and she actually grabbed me by my lapels and she pulled me down and she said just right chaos <laughs> and I thought okay and uh, so that was the workforce's view of so, the process of a process it's just chaos here and I don't know what's happening and half the battle that we find is getting the workforce engaged with us we always try and, and adopt a sort of joint venture mentality to give them a good idea of what we're trying to do. This is for you, the workforce, to make it easier so that you can click a button and you can get the right level of information. It's written at a level that you can understand. And usually we, we try for two simple things in a management system, whether it's policies, documents, automated processes. One is let them access it quickly because that way they don't have to ask people yep. and secondly whatever you provide them make sure it's at a level that can they can understand then there's a chance that we're going to get not just productivity but we'll get compliance we'll have safe working um etc and you've got those things because you've got by focusing on those two things you've got user adoption the people at the sharp end yep. will use the tool because in software and IT industries, there are so many systems that the end users at the sharp end just loathe and don't yeah. like, don't use them. That's it. Um, and that's a recipe for disaster in itself. Yeah. But remember <clears throat> though that we've, we've got people, you know, now, yeah, I was on a train this morning and there was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was children at eight with an iPhone using the, you know, as the ticket, the train ticket. There was, uh, you know, people at 80, 90, you know. So technology has really been driven down now and everybody understands that, you know, we are working with technology at some sort, particularly phones. Yeah. So the idea of um, transmitting that, I, that plan of, hey, we're going to automate this process, yep. most people get it. And it's only, the, you know, we used to talk about Luddites and things like that. And there's less people who, uh, they realise that if they don't adopt technology, then they're going to be left behind and yeah. companies are the same. Yeah. So I think that, you know, we're, we're now maybe <clears throat> not necessarily on the crest of a wave, but I think the wave is 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 going in the right direction. Yeah. And and it's it's our job to make it even simpler for people to, to be able to use it effectively, yeah. efficiently. So when you can engage with your business process on your mobile phone, or for that matter, wherever you are, you know, at your desk on a PC, Correct. you know, on your mobile phone, on the golf course, on a train, um, that exactly. makes it so much easier. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's that combination that we never had before our companies met, before we met. Yeah. Um, so it meant that we could take it down to that bottom level because, you know, the, <clears throat> the structure of the management system does go from top to bottom, bottom to top. Yeah. And it's it's trying to get people to understand what they've got to do to, you know, help the company. And it's our job to kind of make it as simple and as uncomplicated as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, this isn't a one-way street. Have you got any questions for me? Is there anything uh, you'd like to ask me about Excel Point or how we've worked together or our technology yeah, or whatever well, or... or if not, that's fine as well. No, I, I think that um, I think it's you know <coughs> I've I've also seen the the growth that Excel Point have incurred, um, particularly over the last say three four years. So where do you feel that you know are you on the journey that you've planned, or is the is the route beginning to open up? Um, yeah, I fortuitously, think, I think we are on the journey that we planned. Um, I think the best laid plans of mice and men, um, you know, we didn't plan a COVID pandemic um, and that therefore was a big dent. Uh, I think it, mm -hmm. it didn't damage us as a business, but it stalled things a little. Yeah. Um, I think out of the back of that comes an opportunity because I think there's a lot of businesses that needed to pivot, needed to change, mm -hmm. needed to move from working in a factory to working at home or some people working at home and all of that felt very difficult yeah. so our technology can embrace a lot of that and remove some of those problems entirely yeah. so I think there's an opportunity there and we're still on that journey that's planned mm -hmm. um, 
whether we incur it <laughs> or whether um, i.e. it happens to us or whether we make it happen is a different matter. I'm pretty confident that um, yes, there are elements of luck in business, being in the right place at the right time. Sure. But most of what we achieve, we have to work hard to make those things happen. Yeah. Growth doesn't fall in your laps these days. No, absolutely. Very competitive market. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Peter, it's been a pleasure having you down from sunny Aberdeen. Yes. Um, and it's a fair trek to make as well. So thank you for the efforts and hopefully business management systems and a bit of the history of how we got to where we are today has enlightened the audience. Yeah. I, no, thank you for inviting me down, and 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 I feel that we are certainly on the on the right road. Um, and yes, business is never, you know, nobody hands you business on a plate. No. Nope. But yeah, I think the more that we work together, uh, I, th I think uh, yeah, the success at the end of the road—that's for sure. Absolutely. But thank you.